I'm Alison Fraser, host of Women Who Podcast, the show for side hustling women who are ambitious but time limited. Each week, I bring you real life stories and actionable tips to help you create and grow your own podcast. This episode is all about changing tech. When should you press pause on your podcast? In this episode, I speak with Joyce Lehman. She has changed her podcast direction to match her business. We talk about the reason for her break, pausing to recalibrate, and the bonuses of doing that. Joyce is the host of In Layman's Terms, which she started in 2016. You'll also hear that her podcast is currently on pause and what she is doing with her time instead. So, Joyce Lehman, you're from In Layman's Terms, and we're going to be talking today about when is the right time to take a break in your podcast, what you can do in that break, and everything else. So, welcome on, Joyce. I'm excited to be here, Allison. I love your podcast name, In Layman's Terms. We just mentioned before we started recording that it's all thanks to your parents, so kudos to them. I have jokingly referred to saying things in layman's terms forever as a keynote speaker, trainer. It just made a lot of sense with my clients. So I thought when I was creating my podcast, why not make it in layman's mm-hmm. terms? Yeah. Probably one of the easiest things that comes comes about when it comes to podcasting, for you at least. So at the moment, your podcast is on a bit of a break and you've taken breaks before in your podcast. So we want to tell, talk to people about why it's okay to take breaks in their show and what it can actually do for them. So should we talk about, I know, your most current break or a break you've taken in the past? You, you talk us through it. I want to back up and give you, actually give you the backstory so it makes sense. So I think for a lot of us, a lot of the listeners out there, there was the pre-pandemic and the post-pandemic, what you were doing in your business. So pre-pandemic, I was working with more corporate clients. So I had done keynotes across the country. I'd done trainings within organizations. I'd written two books, spoken at TEDx. And so it was one of those things of a lot of times after a keynote or a training, that individuals would come up and they'd say, how can I take you home with me? Not me, actually, but they wanted to take more insights home with me. And since part of what I talked about was performance mindset, and that was the first book, and then Strategic Connections was the second book, I thought, why not create a podcast that encompassed all of that? So that's where In Layman's Terms came about. And the goal at the time, because of my audience, because of the focus of my business, was interviewing amazing individuals literally from all over the world. I got to talk to like Howard Putnam, of all things, who was a CEO at Southwest Airlines. He took Braniff into and successfully out of Chapter 11. He's the only CEO in airline history who's ever done that. And I met him through the National Speakers Association. I got to interview Cameron Harold, who was the COO at 1-800-GOT-JUNK as well as local entrepreneurs. So that was the focus because that was the audience that I was working with. And I had 46 episodes that were out and I loved what I did. Connecting is part of, big part of my business. And so that was truly that focus. Well, then comes 2020 and everything changed. So I went from doing all of my prospecting in 2019 for speaking and training engagements in 2020. The pandemic shows up and guess what? (laughs) any speaking opportunity was gone and thankfully I'd been working with some one-on-one clients doing coaching consulting so I shifted everything to that and the reason I took a break was I needed that time because I had completely shifted my business shifted my audience and I really needed to get back to what I was working on so it made sense and as you know Producing a podcast takes a little bit, it takes time. Even if you've got a good system down, it still takes time to find guests. If you're interviewing people, to record, to edit, just all of the pieces. So that was the reason for the first break. Makes sense, though, if you have to pivot absolutely everything that you're doing. 
and the podcast doesn't really reflect what you're doing in your business anymore. Having that time to, to work on that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because otherwise, you know, it's about your brand. Your podcast has this ability to reach all kinds of people. And it's you launch a podcast and you're not talking about, in essence, I could probably have stayed doing the same thing, but it really didn't fit the focus of how I want to serve clients now. So yeah, getting that focus back was so important. So then we launched season two. So that was part of, you know, how do you do it? Because I had 46 episodes that followed one format and now all of a sudden I'm in season two. So that's, to me, that was the most logical way to make a break was season one was this and season two, you know, season one was 46 episodes. Season two has 12 episodes. But I also changed my podcast art. I changed the overview on the channel. And I don't know, Allison, if you've ever had those conversations in your own brain about, you know, what do I do with old episodes that may not be performing? Do I keep them? Because in essence, they aren't part of my brand, but they kind of are from the second book that I wrote called Your Connecting Advantage. So those are just some things that maybe your listeners need to be considering if they're launching their own podcast or maybe they have I hate to use the term pivot because everybody used the term pivot in 2020, but maybe you've got one of those moments where you do shift what you're doing in your business and you want your podcast to reflect that. Did you keep all those episodes? I do have all those episodes. They are in Lipson. They're actually also in blogs on my website because I am a firm believer in repurposing and using a cross-platform strategy for content. So they still exist. I have actually debated on taking the blog posts down, which led to the podcast. But yet I've had my websites since 2008. You know, so there's, it depends on the traffic. I noticed that those aren't getting the traction that the YouTube videos have gotten. So yeah, we'll see. They may stay in Lipson forever. I don't know. <laughs> you mentioned how you stopped in the podcast because it's no longer on brand, but did you also find that when you weren't having to find your guests and do the recording, editing and everything, it kind of gave you a bit more bandwidth to focus on the new direction that you were taking. It did give me more bandwidth. And that was a big change in my content strategy that I did since now, like I said, I went to corporate, I went from corporate clients now to one-on-one, -on -one, although it's interesting because I've had two corporate clients reach out and say, hey, we'd love to have you. So of course, I'm never going to say no to that. But to me, when I'm producing content and, you know, a podcast is an amazing piece of long form content. So when people really want a deeper dive, they can get that through podcasts. And not everybody wants to read a blog. Some people want to listen. Some people want to watch. So to me, that podcast was that great piece where now I look at and I use YouTube to do podcasting. Because that is that important piece where you've got video, but you've got audio at the same time. And then I repurpose it as a blog and then I turn it into social media content. So when I think about bandwidth, if you were just creating a podcast episode, it lives on one channel. If you are brave enough to do something on YouTube, then that way you've got video and you've got audio, depending on where your listeners want to find you. But most importantly, Put it out on your website or even if you've got, you know, a simple landing page that's just a blog and about me and a homepage that still gives audiences multiple ways and then repurpose that amazing podcast content into short form. So I use Descript, which I love. I now record and edit everything in Descript. I had an amazing podcast editor who I found on Fiverr years ago and Sam was in Croatia. And he was phenomenal to work with on a budget. But yet now I can do everything that I need to do actually faster. So that comes down to that content strategy, right? And so when you think about bandwidth, you've only got so much time. So take that amazing podcast. If you've been recording podcasts, download it and use those transcripts to turn it into something else. Yes, I'm actually going to be doing an episode all about repurposing content in the next month or so. So. This is a really good teaser for that. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could help. Yeah. So you want a break at the moment. Are you going to come back? Absolutely. 
And the reason I have taken a break is I am 59. I turned 59 in September and it was over the course of the summer. I had been working with a phenomenal coach and I loved her organic social strategy process that she had. But where I'm at in my life, my significant other is 67. In fact, he's just retiring now from 41 years of having his business. And so he wants to travel more, which means I need to make sure that my business is extremely mobile, that I only need one VA to help me manage it, not an entire team like my coach did. So instead of scaling up, I decided I want to scale, but in a different way. So what I decided to do, I had been recording podcast episodes. And frankly, I've been doing so many more YouTube. Like I was going live on YouTube every single week. And in hindsight, it was that flat forehead moment of these could have all been podcast episodes, but they were YouTube videos, which means I can take that content and still go <laughs> and turn it into. But that's where I was regular. The podcast was intermittent. So I'm now, because of my business model, I'm shifting to a membership model. So the last three months, I have literally been spending day and night, in addition to working with clients, to work on that new membership content, which I'm going to be launching in February, which I'm very excited about. So once I get there, podcasting is coming back. But as I said, it's going to be a YouTube video with the podcast, and then I'll be able to repurpose that content and share it with my members as well as just my audience in general on social media through my email list, blog post, et cetera. Can you tell us about that membership? I'm intrigued. You're intrigued? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about the membership itself or why I decided to go with the model? I know what you're going to be doing. I know why so, memberships, because that's a recurring income and it makes perfect sense for people who want to go traveling. Yes, I was about to say, and because what I'm doing with mine, it is one of those where, because somebody thinks it, it's such a small amount, how does it work? Well, of course, like I have a, my Visibility Kickstart Club is my first level of membership. It's going to be a $7 monthly membership. My Visibility Builder Society is my $27 a month. And instead of my signature coaching program being to me, I, Frankly, I was one who got screwed by investing with the wrong coaches who were charging too much and you got nothing out of it. I decided that my signature program is $9.97. And I don't want to do more than that because I see people who have gone through the same experience. So the incubator is my signature program at $9.97. So that's where having the multi layers of my membership. But working with a new coach who has launched multiple memberships, she was the one that sparked the idea. And she said, well, why don't you use the visibility tactics? Teach somebody what they need to do to get visible. I'm like, well, that's step four in the incubator. She said, yeah, but do a condensed version for your visibility kickstart. And guess what? One of those is podcast guesting. Because even if you don't have an email list, you don't have a big audience, you have a story. You have an expertise and guesting on amazing podcasts like yours, Allison, is a way that you can actually make yourself visible. We're not using video. And I love what you said. Don't worry about putting makeup on. Don't do your hair. Frankly, I've been working all day. It's 10 degrees outside. So I to be in my office all day. But that's where this is about using strategic visibility, leveraging collaborations, to attract your ideal following, even if you don't have a coaching offer or you only have a small audience. So it's super simple tactics, but it blends in. I love making connections, what I'm known for. But as I said, podcast guesting, that's one of that's one of the strategies I'm teaching. And I think, yeah, I'm 100% with you there because you don't even have to have your own podcast to get on other podcasts. It's kind of like no. all the fun, but no responsibility. You're exactly right. And in fact, I sent out an email to my list and it said, you know, I'm going to do the give me any question you have. I'll answer it. You know, send it to me via email and I answer it for a week. The very first woman that came across, she said, I am terrified to do video. I know I need to get out there. So what else can I do than video? And my response is going to be podcast guesting. Are you kidding me? It's the best thing ever. Yeah. 
hundred percent. I can see you've got a lot of joy for podcasts, not just for your own podcast, but as you say, encouraging others to get involved. Well, and to me, this is where I want people to think about the connections that you make. You're in Australia, correct? New Zealand. New Zealand. Actually, yeah. I like New Zealand better than I like Australia. I sh- Thank you. But the thing is, we connected and we're literally a world apart. Yeah, so you're still on Saturday. I'm um, Sunday. I... <laughs> but that's where when you think about your network, my network, who we know, how we can help each other. I'm in a Facebook group where I go through and I look for the podcast opportunities. And then I mention like my clients who are in there. I've got other collaborators who are in there. And I'll mention I'm like, this would be good for you. This would be good for you. So it isn't necessarily it's just about me. It's how can I help other people? But yet in turn, everybody wins and the connections are extraordinary. Yeah. I, I wanted to go back to the benefit to you being on a break. So how have you enjoyed that break from podcasting yourself or, or what have you done that's been different to when you were churning out the content? With podcasting, well, this particular break, what I've done, in fact, I haven't been going live on YouTube. I used to go live weekly to do videos and then it would go to YouTube and in my Facebook group. I have literally stopped that. If you went out and look at my Instagram, I have a nine grid on Instagram. So it looks like a puzzle that's there. I used to do reels regularly. I've literally pulled back and not done a lot of social media content since I started on the membership. I'm still reaching out to make connections. I'm still responding. But it's one of those, I needed a social media break in general. I just needed to get offline so I could focus really on my membership content, serving the clients that I had. And frankly, I don't know about New Zealand, but in the United States, the political climate, it's a little bit nuts. So sometimes you just need to back up and take a break in general. And especially over the holidays, it was nice to go, I don't have to post content. I don't have to go find guests. I don't have to do any of that. So I could really get back to focusing on my business, but in turn, it helped me to have time to reflect, to go, what do I want to do next? What are some of the topics I need to focus on? So that reflective time is so important. Yes, you do need to go inwards, I think, especially, yeah, there's too much noise on social media. I've been there. I've actually been dabbling in threads, which is another platform to go on, but I found that I've been taking myself off other platforms in its place and not spending the same amount of time. So I think, yeah, we just need to channel our energies into good things. Exactly. And I actually, I got on threads and then I went, okay, this is another shiny object. Where do I really need to be spending my time? And I'll go on every once in a while just to look, but yeah, I'm with you. It's like, you back up. yeah. How has having your podcast in all its forms affected your business? Like what has it done for you and the work you do? It has been one of the most phenomenal phenomenals, phenomenal ways to create strategic connections. So with my first 46 episodes, once I got a few under my belt, it gave me the confidence to start reaching out to people who may not otherwise have wanted to talk with me at all in regards to business. So I got bolder and bolder as far as the individuals I was reaching out to. I did a keynote for the Kansas City Chamber and Mitchell Gold was there and they have a furniture company that's about a $300 million a year furniture company that got locations all over the United States. And I thought, I'm just going to go up and ask. If I didn't have that podcast, then it's harder to reach out and say, hey, let's have a conversation. But he had a phenomenal entrepreneurial story. And so to me, it gives you that excuse to say, I'm a podcast host. I would love to have you on there. So in the Facebook group that I found you, it's like you're asking for people you get to go through and see, you know, the other individuals that you want to connect with. So connecting opportunity, hands down, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I just love all the connections you make through podcasting and whether they become clients or not, we still have a lot of fun. 
Exactly. And they may end up being strategic referral partners. They could be clients. Maybe mm -hmm. they're just followers. Some of my, three of my best friends I met through business. So you never, you just, you never know. Yeah. When you started your podcast, were you into podcasts listening yourself or were you coming into it completely blind? I was pretty new to that. I didn't have, I think I had one. Oh, EO Fire. I'd been listening to EO Fire. That's how I got hooked. And that's where I kind of got my initial strategy as far as what I needed to do to launch. But it's not like it is now. My podcast, <laughs> I'm either on Audible or I am on, I'm, yeah, I'm on my podcast app on my phone. Do you have a favorite at the moment? It depends on what I'm in the mood for. So that's where everything that pops up. So Wiser Than Me with Julia Louise Dreyfus is great. And it's more women-focused content. On with Kira Swisher. If you want, she's wicked smart. But if you want tech, if you want what's going on in the world, then that's that. One of my favorite fun things is Unsung Science with David Pogue. And you're going to learn about all these topics, just anything and everything. So, and then anything by Crooked Media. So there's just, yeah, depends on what I'm in the mood mm. for. <laughs> yeah, that's the great thing with podcasts, though, is that whatever you feel like, there's something that you can put into your ears and just listen to. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you, what have you learned from podcasting that you would like to share with others who are completely brand new to it? So when you're new, and part of this comes from my experience with doing keynotes and trainings. So We've already talked about the opportunities. And if you're if you're timid about getting out there, podcasting can open up the door to unlimited opportunities for you. If you're just you've got that confidence to take that first, you know, that first step. But when it comes to actually creating your podcast, and I'm sure Allison, you've got tips as far as equipment to use and things that you need to have set up. So you've got the sound right. But as a keynote speaker of eight plus years, one of the things that bugs me is when people start to ramble. And I don't care if it's a YouTube video, if it's a podcast, if it's a real short form video and somebody it's like, get to the point. You've got seconds to grab your audience's attention. So make sure that your opening is super clear and people know immediately what they're going to be hearing in that episode and then introduce yourself. So that's one of those, that's one of those sticking points. Like I said, it comes from my keynote days. That's a very good tip. And one I've actually started implementing myself on episodes before this. So we all, we all learn and yeah, there's, it's so long as you're doing something with what you're learning, then that's all good. Oh, absolutely. And I will tell you, if you've got a massive audience, if you're a known name, then you can get away with it. But for those of us that have smaller followings, people, I mean, the stats show like even on your website or your LinkedIn profile or social profile, you've got a split second to get somebody's attention as well as just a couple of seconds to keep it. And fortunately, that's what happens in today's you know world when we're just scrolling so quick on social. So it's the same thing. And if you've got amazing insights, whether it's your personal story, you've got a guest, like grab people's attention and keep them there because you could make a huge impact when you do. Thank you so much for all your tips and sharing your experience with us, Joyce. Uh, we'll put all your links in the show notes, but do you just want to tell us where people can find you? The easiest way to find me is Joyce Lehman. I learned that lesson in 2008. My website's JoyceLayman.com. You'll find me on social at Joyce Layman. So pretty much anywhere, everywhere. And it's L-A-Y-M-A-N, just like in layman's terms. So <laughs> thank you so much. It's been awesome to, to have this conversation with you. Thanks, Allison. If you've listened for a while, I hope you're now seeing that podcasting can be whatever you want it to be that you don't have to follow a set formula or fit into a mold. Joyce is doing her podcast the way that it works for her, and she's changed things as her circumstances and goals have changed. So what do you need help with? Drop me a line with any suggestions or requests for future episodes. You can email me at allison at allisonfraser.co. 
That's it from me this week. I'll speak to you again soon. You've been listening to Women Who Podcast, the podcast for women with something to say.